I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review for Jake Gyllenhaal's Roadhouse, the 2024 Amazon Prime original. This is the remake to the 1989 classic Roadhouse starring Patrick Swayze. There is going to be some spoilers in this review, I think. So if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, then don't watch this video. However, if you don't mind spoilers or if you've seen the movie, then continue watching. As with a lot of remakes, they are panned before people even see them. There are some people who don't even want to watch it. They refuse to watch a remake in fear of the original being ruined. I'm not sure how that happens, but that's their words, not mine. And I'm not like that. I love original movies. I love the original Roadhouse, but I always give remakes a chance. And if they turn out bad, then fair enough. If they turn out good or great, then even better. But no matter if a remake is good or bad, it shines light on the original. I know people who haven't even seen the original Patrick Swayze, Roadhouse from 1989. And because this new Jake Gyllenhaal movie comes out, guess what? They go back and watch the original, whether it's before or after the remake, they still go and see it. So if it wasn't for the remake, then they probably wouldn't have went to see the original classic from 1989. Now it's hard to do a review for a remake without comparing it to the original. So I'll probably do that from time to time in this one. And this movie, the new one, it still follows the same beat as the original film, but it does have its own mark and its own stamp on it. Obviously with the backstory of Dalton in the remake, he was a disgraced UFC fighter. Now, the good thing about this story is you don't get told the full story from the beginning. You can kind of get the gist of it throughout the film, but it, it spoon feeds you slightly certain bits throughout the film. And we find out near the end of the film that he was a disgraced UFC fighter because he was fighting against his friend, most of them are friends anyway, he was fighting against his friend and he won. But after he won, he was so angry that he kept on going to the point where he killed him by accident. So that was why he was a disgraced fighter and he left the UFC. If you look at the original, the original was just a bouncer going to bounce at a roadhouse. Whereas in this one, he is a disgraced UFC fighter who goes to be a bouncer at the roadhouse. So in terms of backstory for Dalton, I actually prefer the remix Dalton over the original one because the original one was just a basic bouncer. Whereas this one, he's got a bit of a backstory and there's something about him that when you're watching the film, you're like, maybe people he's fighting against are not safe because he can flip a switch and he can go over the edge. This one's also got a different feel to it than the original one. The original one feels kind of dark and grungy and obviously late 80s, whereas this one, it's set in Florida Keys, so it's a more lighter looking movie, more fresh looking movie as well, but it's still got that sense of 80s to it. There was not one moment throughout this film I didn't think this feels like the 80s, because it did. It felt like the 80s all the way through it. I don't know if it was intentional or if it was just the way the story went because it was an 80s style story and that's what I'll go on to in a minute. But the look and the aesthetic to this, it was kind of like Miami Vice style, obviously set in Florida. It felt like a Miami Vice late 80s action film that you don't see today. When it comes to the story, I don't think you can do stories like this that we got in Roadhouse today and make it work. But because this is a remake of an original classic from the 80s, I think it does work. You don't see very often these days that kind of guy get into a certain situation and being the good guy, but you're always fearing for the bad guy in it. You don't really get that these days in films. They don't write them like they did back then. So I'm glad that we brought a film out today that mimics a movie from the 80s so that we can get a story like that. And because we don't get stories like that today, it was refreshing to see. The standout of the film was, of course, Jake Gyllenhaal. And if we can all take anything away from this remake is Jake Gyllenhaal makes this film. I think he's got that charm to him. He's got that cheeky smile. He's, he's always smiling throughout the film. And I don't know if that's a trait of the character Dalton or just Jake Gyllenhaal, because if you look in other Jake Gyllenhaal movies, he does smile quite a lot. And that's something that is quite good about Jake Gyllenhaal. He's one of my favourite actors. He has been since Donnie Darko in 2001. So for over 20 years, I followed this guy's career and not once has he been terrible in a role. So I know that there are some negativities behind Roadhouse, the new one. 
but I think what a lot of people who even didn't like Roadhouse would agree is Jake Gyllenhaal steals the show. We can't talk about Roadhouse without talking about Conor McGregor, of course. Now, I'm from the UK, so I know more about Conor McGregor than maybe you guys do in the US and Canada. And I liked him. I thought he was pretty good in it. There was times where I was laughing out loud because of certain things he was saying. He was late for meeting Jake Gyllenhaal and he's like wrong side of the road for me that was hilarious because I drive on the right hand side of the road whereas you guys drive on sorry I drive on the left hand side of the road and you guys drive on the right hand side so things like that is just really funny was he a great actor obviously not he wasn't a fantastic actor but I think there's something there with Conor McGregor there's something about him that he is a bad guy he wants to be a bad guy in films and he looks like he could play the part of a really cool bad guy and in this one I think he was actually decent I don't know what people are watching. I see people online saying he was terrible, never let him act again. Whereas I'm watching him and I'm laughing out loud and enjoying his performance. So I know that as well. I'm from the UK and sometimes I found it hard to understand what he was saying. He's Irish, but I found it hard to understand what he was saying. I knew what he was trying to say, but sometimes I'm like, oh, what did they say there? So people don't understand me in the US so and it's predominantly the US that are watching this film so watching a film if you don't really understand what I'm saying I can only imagine that you have no idea what Conor McGregor is saying in this film so maybe that's a distance you guys from his performance as well whereas I understood most of the things he said and I understood the jokes as well and him coming into a film butt naked as well as genius and then leaving the film butt naked as well in the mid credit scene is also genius. So I'm going to stick to my guns here guys and say that this is so far the best film of 2024 and you're, you'll be scratching your head thinking are you even being serious here? I am being serious. I've not seen a lot of films in 2024 so that's one aspect to it. It is still March so we're still in the first quarter of 2024 and before you ask yes I have seen Dune 2. Dune 2 was my favourite film of 2024 so far until Roadhouse. I just think that Roadhouse, now this is, maybe this can help you gauge why I think Roadhouse is better than Dune 2. I'm not a big Star Wars fan. I'm not a space epic fan, sci-fi fan. I do like sci-fi movies, like action sci-fi and horror sci-fi, but when it comes to pure fantastical sci-fi like Dune and Star Wars, those movies aren't on my street. Now, Dune 2 was probably considered a really great movie, almost a masterpiece, and it probably is, but it's not my type of film. It's still a great film. My type of film is obviously horror, but when it comes to other genres like action movies and stuff, I'm your late 80s guy. I'm your point break type of guy. So when it comes to films like Roadhouse and even the remake to Roadhouse, that's right up my street. I love the the cheesy action film where the good guy gets to get the bad guy. That, that's my type of action movie. So although technically Roadhouse is obviously not better than Dune 2, if somebody said to me, what movie do you prefer? What movie do you want to watch again? I would have to go with Roadhouse because Roadhouse, I enjoyed it from start to finish. Dune 2 was a fantastic film, but one that you can't watch all the time, especially with the length of it. So I would have to choose Roadhouse. So if somebody said, here's all the movies that you've seen so far in 2024, pick one to watch right now. I would say Roadhouse. So therefore for me guys, at this moment in time, again it's still March 2024, Roadhouse is the best film of 2024. When it comes to comparing Roadhouse to the 1989 Roadhouse, it's hard to compare because they're both from different eras. If I watched Roadhouse in 1989 and I had a YouTube channel in 1989, I would probably say, yeah, that's one of my favourite films of that year because it probably would have been at the time. And the same with Roadhouse 2024. I don't think I can really compare what one's better and what one's not better. If I have to choose one right now, I would probably slightly say the 2024 one, only because of the backstory of Dalton and this one. I prefer over the original one, but it's not to say that the original one's not anywhere near as good. I just, at this moment in time, I would say the 2024 one. Maybe over time, the 
the 1989 one will be better. I don't know. But at this moment in time, I think the 2024 one is the better one because of the performances of some of the actors in it. Obviously, Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor are the two standout performances for me, but everybody else was pretty good in it. You had Ellie, Ben, Frankie, all the different characters in this one was pretty good. They are a lot different from the characters from the original one. And sometimes I think it's, it's rubbish when they change up too much. But in this one, I think it was a welcome change because I didn't want to see an identical beat by beat remake of the original. So they changed it up slightly with like Charlie, the little girl in the bookstore. She's playing the this version of the blind guy from the 1989 version. So everyone's kind of different in it, but still, they still feel the same. But overall though, guys, as you can tell, I really enjoyed Roadhouse. But what about you? Do you think it was a good film? Do you think it was a bad film? I know that a lot of people don't like it. And please don't come at me saying that my taste in movies is terrible. It's just my taste, guys. I just love cheese. I love horror and I love cheese. But anyway, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you soon. Meeting adjourned. To get you, Barbara. Ever play Skin the Cat? I want to look back!